dear students today we are starting our lecture about homeostasis in the last lecture we discussed physiology um, we discussed a brief introduction to homeostasis uh, cell and extracellular fluid today we are going to discuss homeostasis in detail we uh, previously discussed that homeostasis means maintenance of nearly constant conditions in the internal environment or extracellular fluid simply it means that the human body is trying to keep a nearly constant condition of each and every nutrient that is being provided to each and every cell there are about 100 trillion cells in the human body from the nervous system to the gastrointestinal system to the respiratory system each and every system uh, needs some uh, nutrients to function and all the systems they are basically made of some cells and each and every cell has to be kept alive and to keep them alive some nutrients has to be provided to them similarly some waste product has to be removed how the human body is providing the nutrient how it is removing it today we are going to discuss this in detail so let's start we will discuss the topic under few headings first of all we will discuss how um, the fluid or the medium is transported to each and every cell then we will discuss uh, how how the different type of uh, nutrients that are present in the extracellular fluid or the environment that is being provided to the uh, to the cells how the nutrients originate in them origin transport origin of nutrients then uh, we will uh, discuss um, removal of waste product how the waste products are removed from the extracellular fluid finally we will discuss regulation control systems and a positive and negative feedback system so let's start with the transport we know that um, there is a, a pump in the human body known as heart and it is transporting blood to all parts of the human body from the brain to the toes blood basically consists of um, blood basically consists of um, red blood cells red blood cells um, and plasma the red blood cells um carry oxygen while the plasma has all the extra nutrients and plasma proteins so um, extra cellular fluid it basically consists of plasma as well as the interstitial fluid so the blood the portion of the blood that is outside the red blood cells and similarly the fluid that is present between the cells it is um, making the extra cellular fluid how this fluid is transported there on the first of all 
इट स्टार्ट विद दार्ट दार्ट पंप्स दि फ्लूड इन टू दि अयोटा फ्रॉम द अयोटा दि ब्लड गोज इन टू आर्टरीज आर्टीरियोल्स which sub further divide and finally uh, they goes to capillaries from the capillaries the actual transport and the actual uh, transfer of nutrient from the blood to the tissues and from the tissues to the um, blood is happening how exactly is it happening we will draw a diagram through the help of which we will explain it for example this is our heart it was pumping the blood in the aorta from the aorta it came into arteries arterioles and finally it is coming into the arterioles and from arterioles it is making the capillaries let's suppose these are two capillaries the capillaries will unite again to form venules and finally veins and uh, they will go back into the heart these are capillaries inside the capillary will lie the cells different cells of the human body blood is made of rbcs red blood cells and plasma or the extracellular fluid it is a portion of extracellular fluid basically plasma similarly the fluid that is present between the cells it is the extracellular fluid or the interstitial fluid the purpose of homeostasis is to provide nearly constant conditions nearly constant conditions so it means it will provide to the cells nearly constant level of oxygen nearly constant level of sodium nearly constant level of potassium similarly with the cells they are active they are active and they are make, making some waste products so the waste products it is more in quantity in the surrounding area of the cells or the interstitial fluid while the fresh blood which is coming from the heart which is being oxygenated in the lungs here we can draw lungs where oxygenation is being occurring so the nutrients which are more in the capillaries they will diffuse into the interstitial fluid while the waste products which are more in quantity in the interstitial fluid they will diffuse into the capillaries but how this diffusion is occurring you should know that all the cells the cell on the cells uh, or the nutrient ions for example sodium potassium oxygen they are continuously moving they are continuously moving in the kind there is a kinetic motion they are all the time moving here and there here and there similarly the ions in the capillaries they will also be moving 
we are all the time in movement but you should see that the ions which are more in quantity in the interstitial fluid like the carbon dioxide urea or uric acid their movement inside the interstitial fluid will be more as compared to their uh, movement in the capillaries because their quantity in the capillary is less so their movement will be more towards the outside toward the capillaries similarly the quantity of those nutrients which are more in the um, capillaries like oxygen sodium or other ions their movement will be more in the capillaries while less in the interstitial fluid so they will move from the capillaries inside the interstitial fluid and will be providing nearly constant level which is the definition of homeostasis so it will be providing nearly constant conditions to all the cells these are just five cells six cells but the human body is made of one trillion cells it is a very big number and all the cells are being provided with nearly constant nearly constant level of each and every ion although it is very difficult um, but there is a range with a minimum and maximum value and the nutrient are being maintained in these that range now uh, we have uh, discussed the transport L let's see how the different type of nutrients they become part of the extracellular fluid The extracellular fluid consists of oxygen. So oxygen comes from lungs. When the heart when the heart pumps the blood it has basically two pumps a pump on the left side which is uh, pumping the blood to the body while there is a pump on the right side this is pumping the blood to the lungs. And inside the lungs, when blood passes, it will get oxygenated. So oxygen in the extracellular fluid, it comes from the lungs. Similarly, carbon dioxide is released, well, we will discuss that in the removal of waste products. So lungs will provide the extracellular fluid with oxygen. Then there are other ions and other nutrients like carbohydrates, amino acids, fatty acids, they basically come from the gastrointestinal system. When carbohydrates, amino acids, fatty acids. When blood will pass through the gastrointestinal system, gastrointestinal system, the GIT, so the food which we have eaten, it will have been digested and the nutrients will be absorbed. It will come into the blood. It is a very rough diagram, but it is just to give you an idea that how different uh, nutrients are coming into the extracellular fluid. So oxygen is being provided to the lungs nutrients like carbohydrates amino acids fatty acids and other nutrients are being uh, provided through the gastrointestinal system similarly uh, liver liver will metabolize or uh, change those products which has been uh, absorbed from the gastrointestinal system they may not be of uh, uh, use to the cells so the liver change the um, structure of the those compounds into simple uh, simple form so that they can be utilized properly similarly uh, the musculoskeletal system how this system is helping how the system is helping uh, the muscles and the bones are helping in the uh, nutrients because uh, the muscles and the bones they help you to move toward the food and they allow you to go to the appropriate place at the appropriate time for example 
when you are hungry and you go to the kitchen to eat something or your dining area to eat something your muscles and your bones are helping you so if it were not for the muscles and the bones the human body could not move from one place to the other and uh, it would be very difficult to provide the different types of nutrients to the human body or the cells so it is also helping now uh, let's discuss let's discuss the removal of the waste products how the waste products are removed the cells which were being provided with different nutrients they utilize oxygen oxygen it is moving but the carbon dioxide and other waste products like urea uric acid ions and water they move out of the extracellular fluid or the interstitial fluids into the capillaries which we previously draw so it will go into the capillaries and from the capillaries we discuss that it will move to the from the through the ven venules and veins to different parts of the human body different organs which will get rid of these waste for example when this blood will move into the lungs it will get rid of carbon dioxide when the blood is passing through the lungs there is a thin membrane there is a thin membrane where exchange is occurring oxygen is moving into the capillaries while carbon dioxide is going outside into the environment when the concentration of the carbon dioxide increase in our body uh, the concent uh, the it signals the brain to increase the respiratory rate and we breathe in and breathe out to take in oxygen and take out carbon dioxide as the concentration of oxygen is more outside so it will move into the blood while as the concentration of carbon dioxide is more in the blood it will move out of the body so when the blood that has been collected through the capillaries through the venules veins uh, and vena cava and then is being pumped through the heart to different organs when it passes it will get rid of some waste product in different organs so when it passes through the lungs it will get rid of carbon dioxide when the same blood will pass through kidneys it will get rid of urea uric acid urea uric acid ions and extra water how uh, the kidneys are getting uh, rid of these ions we will discuss it in detail in uh, renal physiology but uh, to briefly summarize it i will draw a small diagram here to explain how the kidneys help us in the removal of the waste in the kidneys there is a filtration unit the bowman capsule capillaries in the form of glomerulus they filter filter the plasma here and all the waste products along with some nutrients they come into the um, to the renal tubules and while passing through this tubule while passing through this tubule if there is some beneficial substance like oxygen glucose it will get reabsorbed into the human body it will get reabsorbed into the human body while wastes like urea uric acid ions and extra water it will go out in the form of urine so your body is getting rid of uh, the waste products in this form similarly there are other organs like liver liver is also um, helping us to get rid of some uh, waste products in the form uh, in the form of um, bile now uh, let's discuss the regulation of uh, these 
organs or these systems for example uh, the, the human heart is providing the uh, the tissues and the cells with different nutrients and the uh, waste products is being collected from there and it is being lost to the lungs and the kidneys but how exactly these organs are uh, help are being um, coordinating or they help each other in uh, maintenance of the environment or nearly constant conditions all our explanation is surrounding around these two words maintenance of nearly constant conditions the body is trying its level best to keep nearly constant conditions nearly constant condition of all the nutrients so uh, it is uh, not only absorbing a lot of substances from the environments it is also uh, excreting or secreting a lot of substances that are waste products into the environment and to do this all the organs in the body are coordinating with each other there are two main regulatory systems two main regulatory systems one is the nervous system and the other is hormonal system the nervous system consists of input sensors sensory input or sensors like eyes ears skin they sense something then we have central nervous system that consists of the brain and uh, spinal cord which uh, which will coordinate or which will make a reaction and will decide what to do and the motor component the action which has been decided by the brain and the spinal cord will be executed through uh, the motor uh, motor functions the motor uh, the motor nerves supply the muscles and uh, the muscles will uh, help in uh, going out of some region or going towards some region whatever the hormonal system uh, they basically the human body uh, is uh, consists of eight major organs that are making some hormones so there are a lot of a lot of hormones in the body but the main hormones in the body are thyroxine that is being made by thyroid gland then uh, cortical hormones that are being made by the um, adrenal glands uh, above the kidney then uh, we have parathyroid hormone it is being made by the uh, parathyroid glands that are located behind the uh, thyroid gland thyroid is located in front of the neck sometimes it is enlarged there are a lot of conditions which we will discuss in other chapters and in pathology then uh, we have the insulin which will help in the uh, metabolism of glucose how the nervous system and the hormonal system uh, they regulate the uh, different system the sensory the nervous system or any any closed circuit of the hormonal system they consist of sensors they are called detectors then transmitters and finally effectors in between these three um, portions there are a lot of other systems that are also working but first of all an abnormality is detected by the sensors or detectors it is it is sent to the brain or the spinal cord and they decide what to do for example you touch something hot the human body is trying to maintain nearly constant temperature of the human body 
So the signal will go through the transmitter to the spinal cord, not even to the brain, just to the spinal cord and it will decide, it will send a signal to the motors, to the effectors, the muscles to withdraw, to withdraw um, uh, your hand from this area because it is causing damaging damage to the body so it is uh, decided and the within within a second even the human being is not being aware of the what is happening and he is uh, withdrawn his hand from the hot object which is causing damage to the body similarly if the temperature of a room or an area is low or you go to a room where the concentration of oxygen is very low you sense this you get suffocated the level of oxygen in your body uh, decrease while the level of carbon dioxide decrease that is transmitted through the blood and go to the brain the brain there is a respiratory center which um, which will detect and it will through the motor it will uh, order the lungs to increase the respiratory rate similarly it will uh, order the muscles to go out of this re uh, area so when you get uh, when you feel suffocated you just leave that area and you go to some um, uh, area where there is a plenty of oxygen or um, you uh, you arrange some alternative like oxygen mask or something so there um, these are this is the basic philosophy the sensors the detectors the transmitters and the effectors they are coordinating through different uh, ways to maintain nearly constant condition of nutri uh, different nutrients. The example of decrease in temperature or the increase in temperature or the decrease in oxygen or carbon dioxide is just one, um, one component. There are a lot of mechanisms or a lot of sensors, a lot of detectors and a lot of effectors for each and every nutrients. For example, the hormones which we discussed, it is also a regulator. They are uh, regulating the different organs. Uh, they, are, um, they are functioning as a carrier or um, transmitters or they are uh, carrying the message of one organ to the other, especially involving the brain in all the functions. So we discussed the, uh, the different hormones. Each and every hormone has some role to play. For example, thyroxine, it is responsible for the metabolism. It will increase the level of, um, it will increase or decrease the level of metabolism. Metabolism of different substances inside the body similarly the cortical hormones they will try to keep nearly constant level of sodium potassium chloride similarly uh, parathyroid parathyroid will try to keep nearly constant level of calcium phosphate the insulin, insulin will try to keep nearly constant level of glucose, the very important substance because or all our systems in the body are uh, utilizing glucose to make energy and to do their function. So we see to maintain nearly constant condition, the, the heart and the vessels, they are pumping the blood to different organs so that they are provided with the nutrients. The uh, uh, lungs, gastrointestinal system, liver and other organs are helping to provide and to catch a lot of nutrients from the environment and to provide it, it with the uh, nearly constant conditions of all the nutrients. The kidneys and the lungs are helping again to get rid of a lot of waste products like carbon dioxide urea uric acid and, uh, and they uh, they are trying to maintain nearly constant conditions nearly constant conditions of those substances similarly the regulators which consists of the nervous system and the hormonal systems they are coordinating they are um, helping each other to maintain for example they maintain the level of different ions so 
in the nervous system we have the sensors that uh, uh, they act as the input the central nervous system consists of brain and spinal cord and the motor component we will discuss each and every topic in the separate chapter as we have a separate chapter on uh, neurology or the physiology of the brain and spinal cord similarly we have a separate, a separate uh, chapter of endocrinology where we will discuss all these uh, hormones in detail but here we are considering it as a whole as a whole how the human body is trying to maintain how they are trying to keep nearly constant conditions of each and every ions each and every nutrients that is necessary for the survival of the cell because if this oxygen is not being provided to the cells in proper amount if the carbon dioxide is not being taken away in time if the sodium potassium and chloride is not being provided in proper amount it will cause damage suppose the human body the sodium uh, sodium inside the cell is about 142 millimole the normal range is about uh, normal range is um, the lower limit is about 115 millimole for a very short time the human body can uh, endure this 115 for a very short time and the very upper limit is 170 which is the non lethal for short time the if the sodium level is going above these regions uh, there is a narrow range normal range uh, of the um, sodium in which it is being maintained in the body but the non lethal in which the human body is not dying from this that is for a very short period is 115 for the sodium and 170 the upper level of sodium so it has to be maintained in this range that's why it's very important to discuss it's very important to uh, say that each and every cell is being provided with the specific amount of these nutrients now let's discuss how uh, and let's discuss an example of the control systems that are trying to keep the levels of these ions and nutrients first of all we will discuss the uh, the level of the control systems of oxygen oxygen is being absorbed from uh, taken from the environment through lungs while blood blood is passing through the lungs the red blood cells the red blood cells which which has the hemoglobin which has the hemoglobin it will combine the oxygen it will combine the oxygen blood is traveling through the vessels to and it is going through the lungs uh, so the red blood cells in the um, in the blood uh, they will combine with the oxygen and it will take this oxygen to tissue to the tissue through the capillary level as we discussed for example this was the capillary and this is the tissue the cells of the tissue oxygen will come here to the cellular now at the cellular level if the carbon oxygen level in the intercellular fluid on the interstitial fluid is high if the level of oxygen is high the red blood cell here the red blood cell here it will not it will not release the oxygen it will not release uh, the oxygen um some uh, a phenomena known as the oxygen buffering mechanism but if the level of oxygen is low in the interstitial fluid then this red hemoglobin which is present in the red blood cell it will it will release the oxygen it will release the oxygen so 
the in this uh, way it is providing it is providing oxygen only to those cells which are in need of oxygen if the cells are not needing oxygen because the oxygen level surrounding in the surrounding fluid is already high then the red blood cells will not provide oxygen to those cells so it will try to uh, give it to do, uh, to those cells which need it so the in this way the very small cell red blood cells in which there is a very small hemoglobin it is trying to keep nearly constant condition or nearly constant level of the oxygen so if high level of oxygen it will not release but if the oxygen concern level is low then it will release at the same time when the cells are being provided with the oxygen the red blood cells or and to some up to some extent the plasma they can carry the carbon dioxide carbon dioxide which is more here in the extracellular fluid it will move into the capillaries so it will release oxygen and it will take carbon dioxide blood was passing through the lungs that was being pumped through the heart it was passing through the lungs and while passing through the lungs it took the oxygen with the help of hemoglobin it went to the tissues through the help of capillaries and in the tissues it released oxygen to only those cells which were in need of the oxygen and from the from the cells it took uh, the Uh, it took the carbon dioxide so the nutrient that uh, blood was taking that was provided to the cells and the waste product like carbon dioxide was taken now the blood is coming again now the blood is coming again to the lungs because the heart is continuously heart is continuously pumping it is pumping blood through the body as well as through the lungs because we previously discussed there are two pumps in the human heart a left one and a right the left is pumping the blood to the body and from the body it is coming to the right uh, right heart while the right heart is uh, pumping the blood into the lungs where it gets oxygenated and it then it is coming into the left heart so there is a, a simple circuit which is all the time pumping the blood we will discuss it in detail in uh, the separate uh, chapter but this is something which is going on the point which we want to discuss here is how the level of oxygen and the level of carbon dioxide is being maintained it is the control system of oxygen and carbon dioxide but how exactly is it working let's discuss it when the level of oxygen decrease the hemoglobin that is taking the oxygen it is released into the cell it is released into the cell and the level of oxygen the level of oxygen um, uh, it is uh, maintained in the tissue level this ox hemoglobin or the red blood which is present in the red blood cells when it is passing through the lungs it is passing through the lungs it will again take the oxygen cells are continuously utilizing oxygen cells are continuously utilizing oxygen when blood is passing through the in the capillaries through the cells red blood cells carry oxygen 
it will uh, release oxygen to the cells and will take carbon dioxide when the amount of oxygen is decreased the absorption of oxygen from the lungs with the help of hemoglobin will increase and the main, the level of oxygen will be maintained all the time at nearly constant level but when the level of carbon dioxide increase this is a simple simple control system of oxygen the carbon dioxide control system it operates a bit differently when the level of carbon dioxide increase the blood while passing through the brain it will go to the respiratory center the respiratory center will detect the amount of oxygen it will detect the amount of oxygen that it is very high it will order the lungs it will order the lungs to increase breathing so we take deep breath in and out so that the carbon dioxide in the blood is flushed out into the atmosphere and the level is maintained the nearly constant level of carbon dioxide is maintained so if the concentration of carbon dioxide in the blood increase it when passes through the respiratory center in the brain it will be detected the brain which is uh, acting as a control system or a controller or regulator it will order the effectors the lungs it will order the effectors the lungs to increase the breathing and take the carbon dioxide out of the human body and the increased level of carbon dioxide will be decreased carbon dioxide level be decreased now here we saw that when the oxygen level was low when the oxygen level was low a system started a uh, a system or a series of steps that started which increased which increased or maintained the nearly constant level of oxygen in the body so it started here with a decrease and it ended with nearly constant level or the high level similarly when the carbon dioxide level increased it started a series of steps which ended in the low level of carbon dioxide this process is known as negative feedback mechanism negative what is negative feedback mechanism it simply it's a system which results or which reverse the direction of a uh, system it reverse the direction of a system or uh, less less of the initial is being done for example high level of carbon dioxide will lead to less level of carbon dioxide low level of carbon oxygen will lead to high level of oxygen so this process or this negative feedback mechanism most of the control system are working through this system to maintain this nearly constant condition in the body they are trying to maintain the uh, nearly constant condition of the um, each and every nutrient we explained this phenomena just for the oxygen and carbon dioxide but the same thing is going on for each and every nutrient that are present in the human body for example the same the same system is working for the sodium the same system is working for potassium the same system is working for magnesium the same system is working for glucose each and every nutrient is being maintained in a nearly constant level through some mechanism and most of them are working through the negative feedback mechanism so
what is a negative feedback mechanism a system a system which reverse the direction of initial stimulus if the initial stimulus is high the result will be low if the initial stimulus is low the result will be high so this um, this is the negative feedback mechanism in the next video we will discuss positive feedback mechanism and gain of the control systems thanks for watching this video